Hi, Total Recaps here. Today we will be going through the events of a 2015 American post-apocalyptic horror drama film, Maggie, directed by Henry Hobson. Now warning, this video contains spoilers, so watch at your own risk. Now let's get right into the movie. The movie begins with a teenage girl in the Midwest named Maggie, who leaves a message for her dad, Wade, saying that she is leaving town. With a citywide curfew imposed, she wants Wade to stay indoors and take care of the household, thus exhorting him not to look for her anywhere. While it's on the news that the government is on its way out to get things under control a month after the outbreak of a mysterious disease, an anxious Wade draws near the city in quest of his daughter. He eventually finds her in the quarantine wing of a hospital. One of the doctors informs that the military forces have captured Maggie upon contracting the disease and she is currently undergoing primary medical treatment. On consulting the doctors, Wade is appalled to learn that his daughter's infection. He is told that the infection augments her appetite, but once quenched, it is going to make her all the more ravenous, but this is an intense craving for human flesh. When he meets Maggie in the hospice, the horrified girl busts out in tears and expresses her regret for leaving home. While driving her home, Wade informs her that he has been looking for her for two weeks straight. They stop by a filling station where Maggie slips out of the car to enter the pump store, braving her father's disapproval. They both emerge inside to find out that it is desolate, just moments away from stumbling upon a zombie that attacks the two. Fortunately, they soon get away from the eerie petrol pump after Wade strangles his neck and kills him. When Wade brings her home to her stepmother Caroline and step-siblings Bobby and Molly, Maggie talks to Bobby back at the farm, which is pretty much aware of her fate as one of his school kids got infected with the virus and zombified within just a few days. The children are sent to stay with their Aunt Linda until Maggie's issue is dealt with. Abstaining from food, a fretful Maggie expresses her concern by saying that it was not a good idea to bring her home and increase the chances of spreading the virus. However, Wade, a solicitous father, dismisses it and compels her to eat at least something. However, an erasable Maggie storms out from the dinner table when questioned about the missing bandage on her arm by an apprehensive Caroline. The following day, when Caroline is slicing tomatoes in the kitchen, Maggie starts to get visions of a zombie, making her fall from the swing with a great thud, eventually hurting her thumb on the same arm that has the bite that infected her. Fortunately, Caroline comes to her rescue, and upon noticing her gradually rotting finger, she immediately calls the ambulance. Still, while she is on the phone, Maggie fears the worst and slices her infected finger, desperately attempting to get rid of her contaminated appendages. She throws it in the garbage disposal in anguish. Retreating outside, both Wade and Maggie catch sight of two zombies approaching them ponderously. To their astonishment, the zombies are none other than their own neighbors a man named Nathan and his daughter Julia, both completely transformed by the infection. Wade kills Nathan with a hatchet and Maggie rushes inside the house to Caroline before beholding the flabbergasting sight of what Wade does to Julia. On the arrival of the police, an old maid of Wade, Ray, informs him that the family ended up in such a terrible set of conditions because they refused to put Nathan's wife Bonnie in quarantine. The security officer thus endeavors to make his devastated friend and comprehend the fact that a defiled individual is better quarantined in a convalescent home where infected patients are kept under proper care and vigilance. However, his advice doesn't penetrate an unintelligible Wade who admonishes him for trying to take his daughter away to the wing. Officer Ray states that the hearse are on their way for body removal the following day, but while leaving, he doesn't leave the opportunity to tell his friend that the latter might be required to repeat what he did that day with his daughter soon. In the middle of the night, a slumbering Wade is aroused by some strange sounds in the gathering gloom. He steps out to stumble upon his neighbor's wife, Bonnie, who checks up on Maggie and regrets not leaving her husband and daughter locked up, but also did not trust having them quarantined, as the doctors treated her little daughter, Julia, as a test subject and not a breathing human being. She is mortified to look at Nathan and Julia's decaying deceased bodies in the shrubbery where Wade takes her. The scene shifts to Wade getting a call from Dr. Vern Kaplan, who wishes to examine Maggie before placing her in quarantine. After taking her to the health center, the doctor investigates her thoroughly to assure the father and his daughter that the latter is in pretty good shape. However, later, Dr. Vern tells Wade that Maggie's infection is progressing fast despite her strength. During her quarantine, Maggie will be subject to infernally harsh conditions in the hospital wing. Should he agree to euthanize her, the lethal injection that they administer will hurt her extensively all over till the very end. He later suggests that whatever the case be, Wade ought to make it quick, indicating he uses the shotgun on her. Shook by the unexpected turn of events, an ailing Wade decides to make the most of his last few days with his beloved daughter, driving her back home where the two spend some quality time, bursting out in laughter at Caroline's cooking, 
and reminiscing old days with Maggie's biological mother, a gorgeous and smart woman. The next day, Maggie's friend Allie visits her, inviting her on a short trip with friends. When she approves of the idea, Caroline gives her a locket she found on the sofa before the two friends leave cheerfully for their jaunt. They gather around a bonfire along with a boy named Trent who is also infected. While everyone discusses Bonnie's blunder of keeping her infected child indoors instead of putting her in quarantine, Maggie is distraught with fear and grief and soon finds a friend in Trent. In a quiet secluded near the bonfire, Maggie and Trent confide in each other. He says while turning, he would blow his brains out if he needed to. Laughing, the two bonds together and spend some time with each other, culminating in a slow kiss. By the end of the night, Allie brings Maggie home, embracing her with eyes full of tears upon knowing that she would not be able to come see her friend, who is slowly losing herself to cannibalism. Soon after, Maggie's eyes start to lose their original color and turn to a pale gray. Realizing the transformation, she starts to claim that she smells food, although Caroline denies any smell on checking the kitchenette. Her stepmom soon realizes that the smell of her bodily meat and flesh appeals to a turning Maggie. Caroline hides a pair of scissors in her hand while delivering the eyedrop to Maggie because she is scared for her life. An eager Maggie then goes to Trent's place to find his father holding a gun at his son's bedroom door. The boy knows it's time for him to get quarantined, but he refuses to come out nonetheless. Maggie tries talking him down as Ray and his team of authorities enter the house and take Trent away from his father under compulsion. The recent course of events devastates Maggie, who starts to bellow in anguish. Maggie's condition commences worsening. Upon hearing a raspy bark coming from a distance, he goes into the woods, arming himself with Wade's cumbersome gun. Upon reaching, the girl encounters a small caged fox. She later runs back home with her face caked in blood. Caroline is petrified to see her stepdaughter in such a ferocious state. A gory Maggie threatens them not to touch her and stay away. When her dad attempts to pacify his violently ailing daughter, and share with him what happened out there. Maggie mentions the trapped fox to her petrified parents. She claims to have attacked, killed, and eaten half of the small wild animal. Going into the woods, Wade discovers the fox whimpering in pain and shoots it dead. Caroline exhorts a reluctant Wade to make an immediate call to the respective authorities to take Maggie away. Consequently, an aggravated Caroline leaves the house. Although a couple of officers do show up later, Wade fights one of them with his daughter barging in to assure them that she is doing completely fine so that they will not carry her off. Ray observes her, claiming that although Maggie's situation seems to be improving, he will come by again until Wade must make up his mind. The following day, he takes Maggie to a garden that belonged to her mother, where she planted white daisies. It is the last thing that Wade can show her to make his almost transformed daughter feel some form of tranquility. An elated Maggie thanks her father with all of her heart. Sorrowfully, she even tells him to end her for good if she converts to a zombie. She doesn't intend to cause hurt on anyone as a zombie, and her father is the only person who can do the job. Wade helplessly but reassuringly tells her that she is not going anywhere. In the following scene, Wade is approached by a doctor who delivers the same medicine that is used in the quarantine centers, but is also given the shotgun as it is a way less painful procedure. Wade comes home to find his daughter lying motionless on the floor. When he attempts to pick her up, the latter attacks her savagely to the extent that Wade reminds her that it is just her father. Apparently, it is palpable to Wade that her situation is completely slipping out of hand. Maggie is almost completely zombified. Wade sits in the living room with his shotgun, not quite ready to use it. Close to dawn, she walks down the stairs from her bedroom, across the hallway, and to her father. Her skin all gray and her eyes blackened. She sees him asleep in his armchair holding the gun. She stares at him for a long time, breathing in a feral way. Going over to her beloved father, Maggie plants a soft kiss on his forehead one last time, bidding him farewell. She then goes to the roof of the house and thinks about her mother. Maggie jumps off the top, and the last thing she appears to be seen as a child frolicking through the flowers, holding hands with her mother, thus leading her way into the afterlife. And that was my recap of the movie. I hope you enjoyed it. Now comment on what your favorite part was, and make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, this has been Total Recapped.